a searchlight was a common tool used during World War II for various purposes, such as illuminating the night sky to spot enemy aircraft or illuminating the battlefield to improve the visibility of soldiers. Searchlights were typically mounted on military vehicles or installed on coastal defenses to detect enemy ships. This searchlight consisted of a carbon arc light with a manual mechanism for striking and feeding the carbon electrodes. Nikola Tesla designed a carbon arc light in which these feeding and striking mechanisms were done automatically. Let us first understand the working of carbon arc light. Then it will be easier for us to understand this automatic carbon arc light designed by Nikola Tesla. Two carbon electrodes are placed in a holder. Initially, these carbon electrodes touch each other. The holder is then connected to a source of DC supply. Now, the carbon electrodes are slightly separated and the electrons flow from the negative electrode to the positive electrode through the air, creating a spark that bridges the gap between the electrodes. This spark ionizes the air between the electrodes, creating a plasma of charged particles. The plasma is very hot and causes the carbon electrodes to vaporize, creating a bright white light. 10% of light is emitted by the negative electrode, 5% of light is emitted by spark, and the rest 85% of light is emitted by the positive electrode because there is a high temperature, so more carbons are vaporized. Due to this reason, the positive electrode is made thick. After some time, these electrodes have to be readjusted again manually by some mechanism. Nikola Tesla designed a carbon arc light with an automatic striking and feeding mechanism. So, let us open it to see how it works. But before that, I have something special for you. Are you ready to upgrade your engineering game? At JLCMC.com, the world's fastest growing mechatronic components marketplace, the most in-demand products are just a click away from precision linear actuators, ball screws, and timing pulleys, to couplings, aluminum profiles, and industrial bearings. JLCMC is the go-to source for makers, engineers, and manufacturers worldwide. Need something fast? Over 600,000 parts are in stock and ready to ship in 24 hours. And every part comes with free 2D, 3D CAD downloads. No delays, no guesswork. And here's the best part. New users get up to $70 in coupons instantly. That's right, quality components plus real savings from day one. Don't waste time searching a dozen sites. Get everything you need faster, cheaper, and smarter at jlcmc.com. Sign up now, grab your $70 welcome bonus, and start building smarter. Here we have two carbons. The lower carbon is attached to a holder which is fixed, and the upper carbon is attached to a holder which is free to slide between the frame. To control the sliding, two things are attached to the holder, a tubular clamp and a spring. This spring holds the rod at its upper end, but also allows it to slide freely through the same. The pressure of this spring is adjusted by a screw. Another thing to control the sliding of this holder is a tubular clamp. This tubular clamp is counterbird, so that it bears upon the holder at its upper end and near the middle. At the lower end of this tubular clamp, there are armature segments of soft iron. After a couple of minutes, we will see how this tubular clamp controls the sliding of the rod. Now to this tubular clamp. A lever is attached by pins. One end of this lever is pivoted at one of the columns, and the other end of this lever is placed on a spring, which can be adjusted by a screw. This spring supports the weight of the parts and balances the same. Then we have two helix, one of coarse wire and the other of fine wire. The lower end of these helix cores is made in concave shape to control the sliding of the holder by applying a magnetic force on the armature of the tubular clamp. These helix are connected in the manner shown here. Coarse wire helix is connected to the negative terminal and to the lower carbon holder. Fine wire helix is connected to both the terminals only. Note, the positive terminal is in direct contact with the frame, but the negative terminal is insulated from the frame. To control the movement of this lever, we have another lever. This lever is supported by an arm that is fixed on the top portion of the core of the fine helix. This second lever has a soft iron armature block with a limiting screw at one end 
and a wedge-shaped soft iron block at the other end. There is also a limiting screw on the wedge side. Now we will see how this automatic feeding and the striking mechanism works. Initially, the upper carbon rests upon the lower one. Now when an electricity supply is given, current flows through the positive binding post, and then through the frame, then through the holder, then through the carbons, then through the coarse wire of the helix, and then to the negative binding post. In this way, the core of the coarse wire helix is magnetized. Now, this magnetized core will do two things. It will attract the armature of the tubular clamp, and the lateral pressure causes the clamp to grasp the holder. It will attract the soft iron armature block, due to which the second lever will rotate, and it will raise the first lever which is connected to it. Thus, carbons will be separated, and an arc will be formed. In this way, Nikola Tesla designed this automatic striking mechanism. Now, any small variation in current can change the magnetism of this core and can create a flickering of light. How did Nikola Tesla avoid this situation? Well, we can see that as the carbons are separated, the resistance of this path will be increased. And now some current also flows through the fine wire helix. Thus, the core of this fine wire helix is also magnetized. Now, this core will attract the wedge-shaped end of this lever, and it will hold the lever in this fixed position. We can see that any small variation in current will still provide sufficient magnetic force of attraction on this wedge, and it will not disturb the position of this lever. In this way, Nikola Tesla removed the flickering of light. Now the carbons burn smoothly and produce light. But after some time, the arc becomes too long, and the carbon burning is decreased. The current in this coarse wire helix will be reduced, and the current through this fine wire helix, which acts as a shunt, will be increased. So, the magnetism of this core will be increased, and it will attract the armature of the tubular clamp towards it. Due to this, the lateral pressure on the holder will be reduced, and thus holder will slide down and reduce the length of the arc. As the arc length is reduced, the current through the coarse wire will be increased. So, it will again regain its magnetizing power, and it will again attract the armature of the tubular clamp and grab the holder tightly in this position. In this way, Nikola Tesla developed this automatic feeding mechanism of carbon electrodes. Now, suppose the carbons fall into contact, then a large amount of current will flow through the coarse wire helix as compared to the fine wire helix. So, the magnetism of the coarse wire helix will become very high, and it will apply a more magnetic force of attraction on the soft iron armature block. Due to this, the second lever will pass above its normal position, and thus again separate the carbons instantly. Now, as the carbons burn away, the current through the shunt keeps on increasing, until the attraction of the fine wire helix overcomes the attraction of the coarse wire helix and bring the armature lever again into the normal horizontal position. In this way, Nikola Tesla prevented the carbon rods falling into contact during the feeding operations. So this was all about the automatic carbon arc lamp designed by Nikola Tesla. Dear viewer, please like this video and please check out my other videos on Nikola Tesla's inventions.